Mikhail Rubel was a Russian painter who is regarded as the greatest of all the Russian symbolist painters. Rubel did not begin his artistic career until the 1880s and became recognized nationally only in the early 1900s. He died in 1910 at the age of 54. Though he was only loosely associated with the second generation of Russian symbolist painters called the Blue Rose Group, Rubel shared common ground with them, especially in his concentration on the demonic and primitive elements of art. He certainly was a pioneer of modernism, not only in his development of style, but he was also highly innovative with his technique. Rubel broke with the traditions of the Academy of Arts in St. Petersburg, where he had been a brilliant student. His work conveys a complex, inaccessible inner life. He works with a tension between tangible and the intangible, pushing it to its most extreme degree. His work expresses a profound subjectivity, spiritual condition, and in his paintings you will see moments of lucid sensibility that fuse with moments of darkness and distortion. With Rubel, the mystical aspect takes on increasing significance, so that while appearing to be abstract, his paintings maintain a very strong link with the mystical, intuitive out world outside the frame. He was born in Siberia in 1856, and his, his father was a military lawyer who was extremely supportive of Mikhail's early artistic endeavors. Um, he went to school to become a lawyer, but quickly decided that it was not for him and enrolled in the academy in St. Petersburg. Later, Rubel wrote in his autobiography um, in 1901 that his years at the academy were the best years of his life. Before graduating from the academy, Rubel had been recommended by his teachers to help with the restoration of 20th century icons in the Church of St. Cyril in Kiev. He used his experience to search for greater spirituality and expressiveness through classical art. During the years of 1884 to 1889, he worked in Kiev restoring 150 frescoes under the supervision of Professor Adrian Protkov. During this period, he began to develop a painting style using fiery and emotional color combinations similar to stained glass. He then went to Venice um, to learn about Renaissance painters. He was next commissioned to paint murals for St. Vladimir's Cathedral in Kiev. However, he was dismissed from this project because he had an affair with Professor Protkov's wife, Emilia. And this was the very beginning signs that Rubel had some kind of mental illness. At this point in his life, Rubel distanced himself from the church and started to focus on images of the devil. Rubel's work became highly influenced by Lermontov's poem, The Demon, written in 1841. This painting called Seated Demon was the first of Rubel's work to bring him notoriety. Here, Rubel poses the questions of good and evil and putting forward his ideal of heroic personality as he saw it. Rubel depicted a rebel unwilling to accept the commonplace and unjust nature of reality, tragically alone. The word demon is in Greek means soul. Rubel considered a demon to be the soul of a lonely man, and he himself was a very lonely man. Rubel first came up with the idea for this painting in 1889, and he described it as follows. A half-naked, winged, young, moody, and thoughtful figure sits hugging his knees against the sunset and looks at a flowering field where branches rotting under flowers stretch. Rubel places his demon in a horizontal composition, which makes the figure feel cramped, but increases our impression of his size. The demon's sadness is not sterile. He is in a world where flowers are transformed into crystals. Working with a palette knife, Rubel seems to combine the technique of a painter and a sculpture, which gives rise to monumental technique to imitate mosaics. With this painting, Demon Seated, we see the first significant work of a Russian symbolist movement. 
His demon is full of contradictions, a spiritual face and a mighty body. At this point, his technique and style are fully developed. It is characterized by volume cut into multitude of interrelated intersecting facets and planes. Broad mosaic brushstrokes to model form. These characteristics appealed not only to the symbolist, but also to future cubists to come. The theme demon is the epitome of the eternal struggle of an anguished spirit to become central in this artist's work for the rest of his career. Even though the critics were not favorable of Rubel's seated demon, he did catch the attention of a very important Moscovite, Sava Manatov, who was not only wealthy, he also had a lot of influence in the art community. Manitov became Rubel's patron and commissioned him for many works. Um, he took Rubel on a tour of Europe, um, which they also visited um, Spain and Italy. And the paintings Fortune Teller, Venice, and Spain were all painted during this time period. Here you see that Rubel is very happy. You can see the colors are very bright. The um, subject matter is very playful um, and very entertaining. In his painting of Venice, Rubel starts experimenting with breaking form into cube-like shapes. And when this painting was first exhibited in Paris, a young Pablo Picasso was very influenced by it and called Rubel a genius. Rubel's patron, Manmontov, started an artistic community on his country estate outside of Moscow called Ambra Tesvo. And there, Rubel had a ceramic studio where he created sculptures, applied arts, and mosaics. In 1896, he fell in love with opera singer Nazdezda Zabela, whom he married six months later. Because of this relationship, he became very interested in art for the theater and did a number of stage sets, including one for the play Demon. The painting Prin The Princess of the Dream was inspired by French poet and playwright Rostan. The story goes like this. The prince learns from his friend Bertrand about the stories of the princess Melisande who lives beyond the sea. He falls in love with her and her well he falls in love with her ideal and becomes dedicated to her poems and songs. Near death he embarks on a journey to find her. In Rubel's painting we can see a ship soaring over the waves in the center there is a dying prince with a lair in his hand. Standing by the ship's mask is his, fin his friend Bertrand. To the right are pirates Moved by the intensity of the prince's love, what they witness will subsequently turn them into crusaders, knights of the spirit. In the last moments of his life, the hero sings a song about his reverie for Princess Melisande. The entire world, nature's elements, and people's souls alike are caught by the sounds of the lofty music, and at this instant, beauty triumphs in a world of a miracle takes place. A ravishing princess bends over the poet's brow. The painting personifies the ideal of art's timelessness, its spiritual power over the temporal world. This mural was commissioned um, by Mamatov for the decoration of the pavilion um, for the art department of the 1896 um, exhibition. We will produce one more mural for the Arts Pavilion, which um, praised the strength of the Russian land. The exhibition panel rejected both of these murals. It was not until they were brought to Moscow that they were completed by the artist Polonov and Korovan under the guidance of Rubel. They were, this one was moved here to the Trefikov Gallery, um, and this room in the Trefikov was particular specifically built for this painting. The painting Morning, painted in 1897, has the subject of a fairy tale, which is the same um, subject that was painted by Iliak Repin. Here, a man falls in love with a woman, but needs money in order to marry her. So he goes on a quest to find his riches. 
On this journey, he falls into a body of water where he meets a water princess who falls in love with him. But he tells her he is in love with a woman who lives on the land and that he must return to her with his riches. The water princess, princess, after much time, decides to let him go, and as she returns him to the land, she bestows on him great wealth. This is a story of true love and sacrifice. Here you see a typical cool color palette of the Russian symbolist painters, blues, violets, greens, and grays. You see a world that is not one of our reality, but has mystical qualities of feeling of the unknown. Images come in and out of being fully developed form. Rubel explores abstraction and the use of pattern. Rubel also uses the motif of movement, which was a big theme with the symbolist painters. He uses pattern and value to create rhythmic movement through his paintings. Around the head of the water princess, we see a halo of gold that also creates a rhythmic pattern. Rubel uses a lot of metallic paint in his work. He often mixed bronze powder um, with his paint to give his paintings a luminous look. There is some thought among historians that the bronze dust contributed to Rubel's mental illness. The symbol of water refers to the unconscious mind, the world of the unknown. Here Rubel has created a world of the unknown where maidens pop up throughout the painting, flowers flow unconnected to any roots, and the viewer just floats from one element to the next. Um, here we see one of many portraits that Rubel did of his wife. He was very captivated by her talent and beauty, um, and he was very inspired by her. Here we see the abstract quality of his work and the pattern of the dress. Um, the dress, it, if we looked at it just alone, is an abstract painting unto itself. He used a very controlled color palette with a limited range of value in this painting. There's also um, historians who say that because he did use bronze powders in his work, that um, that contributed over time to this limited value range that we see um, now. I do know when you look at these paintings at the Trevikov, they're under very low light, um, probably to keep them from being damaged any further. Here we see Flying Demon, which was painted in 1899. This painting is part of a series that Rubel did to illustrate Lermontov's Jubilee edition of poems. This painting, Flying Demon, um, we see a demon flying high in the sky, um, but Rubel has placed him in the bottom half of the canvas. So he's weighted down by the heaven heaviness of his soul. The background is stony and snow-covered mountaintops. The demon has a pale face with a black hair. His lips are parched, his eyes burning and penetrating. His glaze is that of an unbearable torment. Rubel has, was trying to express the demon's search for knowledge and freedom, the rebellious spirit of doubt. Here he used bronze powders, um, which you can see there's a brown a bronze tint to this painting and it gave it a haunting, luminous effect when it was painted. Rubel did a lot of fairy tales. He fell under the spell of Russian fairy tales um, and executed some of his most acclaimed pieces, including Bogater, Pan, Swan, Tsarevna, and Lilacs between 1898 and 1900. Rubel was profoundly interested in the supernatural qualities of folklore. Um, here he would, could escape into the world of fantasy. This body of work provided a strong sim stimulus for the young artist of Moscow to seek inspiration in the mystical and the symbolic. Here we see the Bogater, printed it, painted in 1898 to 99. Um, Rubel is searching for primitive vitality in this series of mythical pictures. Uh, the Bogotair is a very strong, mighty Russian man, um, and this is the story of him. Here in Swan Tsarevna, painted in 1900, um, it's about a heroine from the tales uh, about Tsar Zaltan from Pushkin's uh, writings about old Slavic myths. 
Rubel designed the scenery for the production for the play um, that his wife starred as the swan, Zarebna. But the painting is not a costume portrait of the artist, of the actress, I'm sorry. It's a charming myth about the supreme beauty, about the secret of its manifestation in the world. In this painting, we see the aesthetics of symbolism as Rubel interprets the swan as the epitome of inspiration, which may either elevate the soul or reveal it to darker, mysterious sides of life. She's a creature of a dual nature. She epitomizes two elements, the dark, cold element of water and the airy, airy celestial element of the heavens. The artist tries to seize the moment when the maiden turns into a bird, the miraculous metamorphosis of shapes which seem to be melting in the last rays of the setting sun. He freezes the elusive movement of the departing Sarevna. Lilac, painted in 1900, um, this painting embodies symbolism, um, typical symbolist imaging of the element, elemental world concealed under the veil of twilight. The artist seems to bring to life nature's spirits filled from ancient mythological consciousness. They are souls of flowers and plants. The moonlight reveals the outline of one of them, the soul of the lilac bush, a dryad. Rubles works with a palette knife, which makes it possible to apply paint in faceted dabs. Thanks to this technique, the lilac bunches grow as if they're coming out of a dark space and turn into a fantastic crystals glistening in the moonlight. The artist does not complete the flower heads, making them look as if they're covered by flocks of fluttering moths. Their shape in a state of continuous transformation. The concentration of purple shades gives rise to the illusion that the atmosphere is saturated with the aroma of lilacs, filling the dark night with their breath. Moreover, moreover Rubel's striking use of blue, mauve, and gray tones at this time served again to influence the Blue Rose artists and others in their choice of color and led symbolist writers to refer to the poison of Rubel's green mauve lilac. Swan is one of the last paintings in this series of fairy tales that uh, Rubel did, painted in 1901. The Demon Prostated, painted in 1902. In 1901, Rubel returned to the demonic themes in this large canvas called Demon Downcast, or Demon Prostrated. They're the same canvas, and they have two different names. In order to astound the public with an underlying spiritual message, he repeatedly repainted the demon's ominous face, even after the painting had been exhibited to an overwhelmed audience. It was said that he worked on this painting even when it was hanging at its exhibition, often coming into the gallery up to 40 times a day. The painting is one of his last experiments with his most important theme of free, rebellious, creative spirit personified with the image of a demon. The hero is thrown down into the chaos of nothingness, into the depths of insensate elements, which is emphasized with wave-like rhythm of the image. The horizontal composition enhances the feeling of a brutal downfall into the abyss of hopeless defeat. The demon's body, the color of the ashes, looks disjointed, as if in the grip of torture. His arms twisted crosswise, and expanded with wings, and his drawn face with undying light in his eyes remain to another winged creature, remind us of another winged creature, Seraph, the spirit of light. Even though the demon has been vanquished physically, his spirit is undefeatable. He is in the center of a kind of fiery circle in his own wings. The artist paints peacock feathers using metallic lacquers, using making them sparkle and glisten on the dark surface. But it is not only the ornamental beauty of the plumage of the kingly bird that attracts the artist. The peacock is a symbol of imperishability and eternity. The precious feathers wrap around demon-like flames, which brings to memory the legend of the bird phoenix, which burns only to rise again from its own ashes. 
When he finished this painting, he had a severe nervous breakdown and was hospitalized in a mental clinic. Rubel suffered from mood swings, and he was often irritable and easily overexcited. He was hospitalized for his illness, but his doctors deemed that he was incurable. After a brief stay in a clinic, his health did improve, only to take a sharp turn for the worse after the death of his son in 1903. At the end of that year, he had another severe nervous breakdown and was hospitalized. While he was there, he painted a mystical pearl oyster in 1904 and striking variations in the themes of Pushkin's poem, The The Poet. He also continued to work, abandoning the demon that caused him so much agony, and returned to portraits and fantasy. Between 1902 and 1905, he also created his best black and white works, remarkable for their keen insight into the characters of the people that he painted. This painting, after the concert, painted in 1905, um, is one of his last works. It's... By this time in his life, he was going blind due to syphilis. The painting portrays the artist's wife um, wearing a dress that he had designed. The work, having been left uncompleted, um, is pastel and charcoal on canvas. Rubel attempts to penetrate the tragedy of creativity by portraying the model in a state of exhaustion after a stage performance. The, The glare of the blazing coals in the fire contrast with the anemic colors of the surrounding space. The fireplace is a symbol of the light that emanates from her soul while her face while her face is left pale to show her exhaustion. Considering the time period it was done, it is very similar to the characteristics of Matisse's paintings that he did while in Morocco. His last work was a portrait of Valerie Bryusov, painted in 1906. Um, And shortly after painting this portrait, Rubel lost his sight and spent the remaining years um, deliriously preparing himself for the return of his eyes. Distraught by blindness and inability to paint, one night in March of 1910, Rubel opened a window and for a period of several hours exposed his bare chest to the penetrating chill of St. Petersburg. One week, one week later, he succumbed to pneumonia and died. His death was considered a suicide. Mikhail Rubel was a painter, sculptor, theater designer, draftsman, and illustrator. His work stands out because of its originality. Despite the absence of direct followers, the importance of Rubel's art should not be underestimated. He pointed the way and made possible the experiments of the succeeding decades. He influenced Russian symbolist, the Cubist, and abstract movements. He was a transitional figure between traditional and modern art. Rubel both influenced and inspired artists of a new generation. Mikhail Rubel was a Russian painter who is regarded as the greatest of all the Russian symbolist painters. Rubel did not begin his artistic career until the 1880s and became recognized nationally only in the early.